Howdy folks, Brother Jim reporting here. Another teaching from God's Word because the Pope has messed it up. Lead us not into bad translations. Pope Francis enacts change to Lord's Prayer. Are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. We all know the words by heart. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil that's the catholic text of the lord's prayer but the vatican under the direction of the poopy pope francis will soon enact a major change to the text to correct what the pope has called a band's bad translation i like the way they wrote lowercase p for pope here Again, lowercase, the Pope in 2017 said that the phrase found in Matthew 6, 9 to 13, lead us not into temptation, is not correctly translated. Quote, I am the one who falls. It's not him, God, pushing me into temptation to then see how I have fallen, the Pope explained. Well, today we're going to give you the understanding of the Lord's Prayer. I've meditated on it a lot and studied it. After 16 years of study, experts from a theological, pastoral, and stylistic viewpoint found a significant mistake in these translations, the Daily Express reports. According to the project, the line, lead us not into temptation, should be changed to abandon us not when in temptation. Oh, that sounds more palatable. It makes sense. But it's not the truth. This proposal, which has been submitted for approval to the Vatican, is likely to be welcomed by Pope Francis, who last year noted a father does not lead into temptation. A father helps you to get up immediately. And Jesus says, call no man your father, referring to the Roman Catholic Church. Call no man your master, referring to Buddhism and uh, Hinduism. I think it's Hinduism. I think it's mainly Buddhism and the Chinese uh, cults. And then he said, call no man rabbi. Referring to Judaism. Because they're all false cults that lead you to hell. There is no salvation but through Jesus Christ. And all those cults are anti-Christ cults. Now, so that's what Jesus was speaking of. He wasn't talking about your earthly father and mother when he says, call no man your father. And then he he followed it up by saying, call no man your father, but your father in heaven is your father. See, that is your celestial father. The father you cannot see is the celestial realm. We are terrestrial. Your earthly father is a terrestrial being. This proposal, which has been submitted to approval to the Vatican, is likely to be welcomed by Pope Pope Francis, who last year noted a father does not lead into temptation. A father helps you to get up immediately. Yeah, it's funny because he says a father. Isn't that like a terrestrial father? Yes. Comparing it to the celestial father who cannot sin and or cannot lie numbers 23 verse 19 god is not a man that can sin that can lie or does need to repent of any sin correct you see you see how he's trying to make the celestial the terrestrial here he added it's It is not a good translation because it speaks of a God who induces temptation, which makes sense at first, right? But I'm here to give you the truth today. It's Satan who leads us into temptation. That's his department, the Pope said. Well, actually, that is the truth. That part of the truth. But you see, wasn't it the serpent in the garden who is actually Lucifer, Satan, the dragon, the devil? all named out in Revelation chapter 12, who told partly truth to Eve when he says, you shall not surely die today. That's right. And 
Adam and Eve did not die, did they? So they made God out to be a liar, didn't they? Or didn't he? Supposedly, but when you go to 2 Peter 3, 8, it says the day with the Lord is as a thousand years, and they did die in less than a thousand years. God's word is always true. Let every man be a liar. The prayer has been changed before. Well, let me tell you something. It is the whore who rides the beast. The Roman Catholic Church who has perverted all, has written all the perversions of the Bible. But it's funny, this very same religion they created, Islam, 1500 years ago, there's only one version. I wonder why is that so? Why would you need to pervert something that is totally wicked? You only pervert something that is totally honest and true, right? There is no other versions. There is only translations in the English from the Quran in the Arabic. Okay. I think it's Arabic. Uh, I might be wrong there, but there's only translations from that language into English. In the compared to the Bible, KJV, ever since 1611, when it was finished, there's about 80 different versions, not translations, versions, meaning they are different. There is no different version of the Quran. There's only a trans, one translation into the English. So according to them, the poopy Pope, who has been the uh, head, the Pope has always standed for, st stood for perverting God's word, writing all the perverted versions from the very beginning, 2000 years ago, when they used to be the Roman Empire who actually put Jesus on the cross physically. The prayer has been changed before in 1928. The words, for thine is the kingdom and power and the power and the glory forever and ever were added. Pope Francis said other translations have been altered. The French have modified the prayer to do not let me fall into temptation because it is me who falls, not the Lord who tempts me to then see how I fall. The change to the prayer also knows as the Pater Noster will change quickly. A representative from the Episcopal Conference said, the bishop intends for the publication of the new edition to be an opportunity to help renew the ecclesiastic community. Developments like these are becoming increasingly crucial in the process of Christian initiation in workshops and in proposals for the permanent training of the clergy. You mean the permanent brainwashing of the saints. All right. All right, so let's go to town here in God's Word of Truth, the King James Version Bible where we know the truth. I have here in the Pure King James Bible search software three different words. One is tempt, tempted, and temptation. We're going to briefly go over this to make it fairly quick, okay? When you we disable the first two and we go with temp only okay and it comes up 14 times in the whole bible the first time is in genesis okay and it says there here it says it came to pass after these things that god did tempt abraham and he said unto him abraham and i and he said behold here i am and this tempt is about Abraham bringing his son Isaac to the throne to slay him. And it just came to me recently, folks, that here's the thing. God the Father is the celestial father of all nations. That's right. He's the unseen father of all nations and creator. The father of all nations on this planet, the terrestrial father, is Abraham, right? What did God the Father do? He had to give his son to die on the cross for all the sins of mankind. He did nothing wrong, right? What did Abraham have to do? He had to give his son, Isaac, to 
because he was chosen by God to be the father of all nations that are going to be blessed, he had to give his son. But there's only one problem, Jim. His son didn't die and was not slaughtered at a cross, was it? No. He did nothing wrong, though, did he? No, Isaac did nothing wrong. See, what God was trying to show us through these similitudes here, he was trying to say that even though you're the father of all nations, I will tempt you, as it says right here in Genesis 22, verse 1, because it's a test. I want to see if you will obey me. And then he sends the angel to stop him from slaying his son, right? So he passes the test because he obeyed God. You see? It's beautiful. And here's the best part about it. He never had to slay his son, but God, the celestial father, he had to give his son to die a crucial disgusting a horrible death at the cross for all the sins of mankind right so what happened was Abraham becomes the celestial father and God shows his grace and mercy by saying you're not me you don't have to give your son to die and then the, the text says that the father was pleased that his son was bruised. I wonder if Abraham could say that about his son, if his son died that day and was burned as a sacrifice, as God told him to do. I wonder. Only God could do that for us, huh? So God is showing his complete grace and mercy compared to the terrestrial father, Abraham, of all nations. So that's what I wanted to share with you as a sideline, okay? Now, we're going to go in to this tempting, okay? And show you how ignorant the Pope is, okay? Okay, so God tempted Abraham, right? It says right there, Genesis 22, 1, right? Now, if you... If you disable that one and type <coughs> pardon me type in tempted you slide way down here James chapter 1 verse 13 let no man say when he is tempted I am tempted of God for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempteth he any man it seems like a contradiction doesn't it because Genesis 22, 1 just told you that God tempted Abraham. And the Lord's prayer is, lead us not into temptation. Hmm. Was Abraham just any man? He is the father of all nations. A little bit of a difference. Now, I want to show you something else. Now, when you type in temptation, okay, that's the exact word, right? Now, watch what you see here. It occurs 16 times in the Bible, starts in Psalms. Harden not your heart as in the provocation, as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. What's the day of temptation? Hmm. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And there it is, the passage the poopy pope is talking about. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, if you just keep on reading a little farther, we, we, we find some golden nuggets of truth here through God's word. And we see the same analogy going through here. But if you notice here, it says over and over, I can't remember if it's here in t under this temptation. No, under tempted. Uh, let's go back to tempted. What do we see as a normal thing here? 
in the in the uh, in the Gospels. Being forty days tempted of the devil, speaking of Jesus. Now we go down here. It says. It says when in Psalms 95, 9, it says, when your fathers tempted me, proved me and saw my work. Yet they tempted and provoked the high God and kept not his testimonies. And hold on just a second here. It says you sh thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Oh, okay. It's under tempt. There we go. Not the past tense. Jesus says in Matthew 22, 18, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny that I may see it. It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Who's the only one that, that tempted the Lord thy God? In the celestial realm? Satan, right? He tempted in the, him in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. Now, if you go over here to Acts, it says, Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the Spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the, do at the door and shall carry thee out. They both died because they tempted the Holy Spirit. Jesus already warned them, Don't you tempt me. And now, therefore, why tempt ye God, Acts chapter 15, 10, to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? 1 Corinthians 7, 5, defraud ye not one of the other, except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. And 1 Corinthians 10, 9, Neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. You see, if you tempt God, you end up going to hell, it seems, huh? Yep. Now, let's look at the word temptation. Okay? And here comes the golden nugget. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, Jesus says to the church of Philadelphia in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Hmm. The hour of temptation. That's a time period called Daniel's 70th week. But remember, when Jesus said the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6, 13, he was wrong in the translation when he said, Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Do we need to tell God to 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 uh, deliver us from evil? What does that mean? Well, let me show you this. It's been on my channel for ages. Matthew 21, 35 and 30. I'm sorry, Luke 20. Luke 21, pardon me, 35 and 36. For as a snare shall come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. That, my folks, is the rapture. To escape all these things that comes on the whole earth and no one shall escape it. There's only one way to escape it. It's by Jesus' words when he says the, the hard to understand mocking, come up hither. That's right. 
So, what is going on here? Because in, in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, it says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience to the church of Philadelphia, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. That's right. You are my saints. I keep you from the hour of temptation. Well, what happened to the great tribulation saints, Jim? They had to love not their lives unto death, as Revelation 12, 11 says. The temptation to continue to live for this world and eat. Because if you take the mark of the beast, you can eat. But if you don't take the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell or eat. That's right. There is no trading. You see, that's the system that is forming in the world today. Okay. So it's called the hour of temptation. You know, there's a funny because another translation, this is the, the day of the Lord starts right after the rapture, folks. That's what this period is called. The seven years of great tribulation and the thousand year reign of God on earth, the day of the Lord. Why would it start with the great tribulation? And this is what a, people, a lot of people do not understand about the day of the Lord. Because when you go to Revelation chapter 13, it says, And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and his great authority. The dragon is Satan, right? That's the first beast. That's the Antichrist, the man out of the world. But the second beast is Satan manifested in the flesh. He comes up out of the earth and he has two horns like a lamb because he wants to be like the most high, Isaiah 14. And he spake as a dragon because he is the dragon. But he is Satan manifested in the flesh. That's why he speaks like Satan. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. What's this say in verse 15? And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Who gave him his power? God, your creator. You see, what I'm trying to show you here, God gave the power to Satan and the Antichrist for the seven years of great tribulation. I've talked about this many times. So for that reason, the reason why Jesus is keeping you from the hour of temptation, as it says here in Revelation 3.10. It's the seven years of great tribulation. It's because they were not found worthy and not praying and found worthy to escape all these things that shall come upon the face of the earth. Here's another reason why they are not deemed saints when the rapture happened. In Ephesians, I'm sorry, in Ezekiel verse 30, verse 3, or chapter 30, verse 3. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near. A cloudy day, it shall be the time of the heathen. Now, out of that period, great tribulation saints are brought into heaven by being beheaded as Revelation chapter 7 and Revelation chapter 20 speaks of. And chapter 12 verse 11. You see. But the point here is, is that. After the rapture. This is the seven years of great tribulation of the heathen. At the moment. Er, every heathen. Was left behind. Even if they were believers. It's because they were not found worthy. 
And if they were not found worthy, or they were not born again, were they? Exactly. It has nothing to do with faith. Yes, we are justified by faith, but if there is no born again experience, if there is no Holy Spirit manifesting out of your body to prove your faith that is effectually wrought with your works, you're not worthy. Why do you think Paul says to work out your salvation? There is no number for the judge of the quick and the dead, who is Jesus Christ, by the way, how he's going to judge your salvation on rapture day to make the rapture. Paul just says to work out your salvation. There is no number or grade. We can't put a number or grade on salvation. Only the judge of the quick and the dead knows what's going to happen. You see? We work out our salvation by fear and trembling. <coughs> as Paul and Peter both say. You see? Because the beginning of wisdom starts by fearing the Lord. And therefore, our salvation is based by fear and trembling. You don't hear this kind of preaching in Babel buildings today. Go to a Joe Olstein, you'll never hear this kind of teaching. Because it's God's word. Sorry. I just give God's word here. Thank you for listening. I hope you understand now. That when Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3.10. That we are, he is not going to lead you into temptation. Because you have kept the word of my patience. And then, and you notice here it says, what shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. You see, and there's another scripture before I end here that Paul says, God will never give you more than you can handle. Now, right now, if you were to be left behind and you knew that you had to be beheaded, it, it, it'd be shocking. You would think, oh my God, I can't do it. But God would never give you. He made a promise that Paul said he will never give you more than you can handle. I can't be beheaded. I can't go starving and refuse the mark of the beast. My flesh is too weak. Don't worry. God will never give you more than you can handle. But if you take the mark of the beast, you are damned to hell. Consider it. Work out your salvation by fear and trembling. You see? God's word is true. It's called the hour of temptation. And who's giving it to the world? Well, Satan's giving it. But God gave him the power and the seat and authority. That's right. God gave that power to Satan. For he hath but a short time. Revelation chapter 12. The hour of temptation. The seven years of great tribulation. The first half is the Antichrist, man of sin. The second half, after the abomination of desolation, where Satan goes into the temple of God and declares he is God, the ultimate blasphemy. Then, the Antichrist turns into Satan because he has a head wound onto death. It's all there, folks. The hour of temptation comes from God through Satan. You see? So God does not tempt. God does not tempt any man. You see? But he did tempt Abraham. He did. But Abraham was the father of all nations. To, to much is given, much is expected. And that is scripture. You don't think that much is expected of the father of all nations? May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a very important announcement. 
Would you like to see most of your illnesses go away? Let me introduce you to the Water Smacker. A new modern breakthrough in science has come to knowledge ridding your body of many toxins through this state-of-the-art new technology. The testimonials are endless. People have been healed of shingles, pancreas survivor healed, colon cancer patient healed. Your skin returns its oil back to itself and elasticity. Gray hair goes away. Look younger. Red blood cells return to being round. Plaque in your arteries is wiped out. Blood pressure is lowered. Feel stronger and have more energy. Return to a more youthful feeling and look. Pick up your water smacker today for only $350. And don't forget to mention Brother Jim sent you. The link is down below along with the website and other videos for a much longer description. Thank you.